Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick. Welcome to the channel. Something different today, we're going to look at one of the Lightroom alternatives that I've recommended before, a new version of On One Photo Raw 2019. Hi folks, we're going to dive in and take a quick look at this. This is not meant to be a thorough in-depth review. There's actually loads of videos on, on one about that and I will probably do some videos in the future. So this is just a general kind of overview look at 2019. So it, the, the layout's got a new layout and it's, it's quite nice actually I have to say. Um, it's all sorts of details as the breadcrumbs to where I'm looking at these pictures here. We've obviously got our catalogue folders here and local drives and stuff like that. Over here we now have browse and edit. We come to edit in a minute and see why things are slightly different there. Um, layers, panel, hit short, they're all there as well. And the new focus stacking. Um, so I don't, I don't have a sample image to do focus stacking, but as well as doing panels, HDRs, you can do a, a stacking photo merge, which is where you have images that are shot at different levels of focus and you can put them together to give something with a greater depth of field. Uh, there's also this new keyword list so you now have access to keywords that you have any keywords that you've basically gone through files that they have you will actually they will start to load in here and you can do stuff like edit the keyword delete the keyword and then you can also go find catalogued key photos with keywords that's the same as double clicking now i'm not going to do that here because this is just going to be a very quick look through because if i do too much this video will get too long and you will be utterly utterly bored so as you can see here this is quite interesting in terms of the overall look um, so what we will do now is we will jump in and we'll actually go into edit see what's different with edit actually let me grab a, let me grab a face file here for a second here and just grab this one here this is just a random selection to be honest as we can see it just added to the keywords here because now it knows that that's an additional one with the keyword so I'm going to go in here to edit so we can start editing and what we can see here is that we now have layers here we now have develop and effects develop is the basic settings for this and this has been not retouched at all here and then we have portrait all right so we have this new portrait thing which is perfect portrait brought back into it so let me just jump into that to show you a new feature here so it's finding faces so we can see here that the face detection has automatically detected a face okay so it knows this is the face and so if we start to come in here and click on this and then to remove blemishes and just let's smooth the skin a lot so it's really kind of obvious so we can see that this stuff is happening here and um, shine, evenness of skin and range. So if you want, you can see that it's doing loads of stuff. Eyes, so it seems that it's going to white click on the center of each eye. Okay, so there's the center there and it's kind of the center there. Now it's not really detecting the full eye there because it's only half an eye. So we can see that it's white in the eye there. Okay, and then mouth, click on the corners of the mouth. Okay, and then we can shape it here to get the lips in the right kind of place. And so therefore it'll let us like change the mouth and stuff like that for vibrance and for whitening. So there's no teeth there as well. I could probably come down a small bit. So we can see that it, it does have this automatic retouching feature. Okay, now I've overdone it a little bit there and um, because I have <laughs> I'm just showing you the demo basically on it. All right, uh, so effects. Now what's happening here as well is we now have layers. We're able to do stuff in layers as well. So we can duplicate layers, for example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna jump out and go to a different folder here altogether for a second. So I'm gonna go back to browse. And if I open up this one, we should be able to grab something here. So. These are actually HDR, so if I just jump in here to this one, I can select these images here and make a HDR. So we can see here in that we also have that create focus stack is there. So I'm just gonna create a HDR really quickly here. Uh, I'm not gonna get worried about the settings, I'm just gonna use what's there. This is from a drone, so they're only very, very small bits of bracketing. So let's say I'm here and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that the sky is too bright. I mean, I could come in here 
just so that you know that I'm not worried about these guys here I could come in and go fix and just get rid of them like that and that was when I was taking a shot that I, I wasn't particularly worried about them being in the shot because I knew I could get rid of them and I could fix up other bits and bobs when I'm there but now one thing I could do is here, I could click on plus here to add a new layer and I can actually choose from the photos that are already there so I could actually grab say the darker one here and go add as layer so that now would be on top of what's below uh, and it's completely non-destructive so now I have all of the developed settings that I have for this that I can change again at any stage as well so I'm going to darken that even more then I'm going to grab a, a masking bug here and let's drag that way so I need to spin it around so grab that spin it around so I have the darker sky up top there so that's just showing you that uh, your, the layering is actually way way better and stuff like that so we've seen that there is a kind of a faster workflow and that there's a new workflow for layers now I'm just going to jump to Lightroom which was actually playing up on me earlier because it wouldn't log in for some reason so I've made this tiny catalogue of three images which have a little bit of settings done on it as well that's probably a little bit bright I'm going to just darken that down slightly and I'm not sure why that zoomed in there probably did that and and of course, because I have my loop deck plugged in, it's jumping to the HSL still. So that's probably a little bit bright as well still. Okay, so I have this catalog here. If I go to File, uh, plug in Extras, I come down to Migrate Catalog to On One Photo. Now this is obviously meant to be a one-time thing. That's what it says, one and done. Your photos are safe. You'll need time because, you know, if you've got it. And then when you're ready there, you go to prepare, it tells you what to do, what's going to happen, the collections can be migrated, all of this kind of stuff. Um, so we can go migrate collections, uh, migrate development settings, so that will bring it in. And then copies, create copies with Lightroom adjustments, so that will do rendered files that are not re-editable. Okay, so now if I click migrate, it will go through the migrate process. And if you jump over to uh, on one, back out the browse all right okay so it's running there so so now it's, it's loading them in so now obviously if this was done with um like a huge um let me think of it if this is a huge catalog it would actually take loads and loads and loads and loads of time so here's a catalog folder. So, so we can see here we got this one, this particular image here. And we can see that it's got that little LR tag on it. So that means that it's still being processed. And if we go back out here, we'll see so that means it's still being processed. So when the processing is finished, and um, that will go away. And then we'll be able to compare them. So I'll be able to compare what's going on. Alright, so if I jump back to Lightroom here for a second, you should be able to compare them and that they look quite similar. And the whole point is that they do look, you know, reasonably similar. That it's doing, using AI to get them across uh, and to get the settings across as well. And we can see that there's a lot done in settings here and um, to try and make them match up. So that way you can do some, you know, migration from Lightroom itself. Um, what else do we have here now in terms of new stuff? So local adjustments are here as well now. Um, but the thing about local adjustments is this is really just to match stuff that is in Lightroom. Because most of the stuff that you do with local adjustments, you can already do on layers by creating a new layer and then using masking to get it. But the idea with this is that it just gives you a chance to do a little bit of, like, so this is like a brush adjustment and stuff like that. And you can add your own adjustments. So, like, I just go from there for adding stuff there. So that's really what that is. I'm not going to jump into it too much. Um, there's a couple of new filter options as well. So if we go to effects and go add filter. Um, what's new inside here is we now have film grain. So we have film grain to, that you can be added as well. Uh, curves, uh, which can be added. Um, and there's the color adjustments as well. All right. So by adding a color adjustments filter, it just gives you something that's a little bit kind of close to 
HSL. So you can go in and you can select the various different colors for that. So these are all new to on one. So like I say, this is just a very, very basic run through to give you an idea of what's there. And um, with layers as well, there's also an option to do auto aligning layers. And uh, there's also a text tool, which I've only messed about with a little bit, because I've obviously only had this for a couple of days. So I'm actually not used to how the text tool and stuff like that is working. I know that I can put that there, put in text and go, how oh, yeah. Okay, and if I select it here, I can do changes, like I can change the font and stuff like that. But as for moving the text around afterwards and all of that kind of stuff, I'm actually not sure how to that. Oh. Oh, right, okay, so this let me move it there as well. I think I was trying to move it the other day and it wouldn't work for me, so. So you can see we, we, we've got our text there, so you can go in and do whatever you like with it. Oh, yeah. We can put in text as well, so you can have text on it as well. So that's kind of a cool feature. So it's a very, very quick run through, um, but it's actually, I'm pretty impressed with it. And you've seen some of the stuff happening in terms of real time speed as well. Um, like you saw the speed of the HCR being processed and stuff like that. And it wasn't, it wasn't particularly tedious. It was actually quite fast. And um, so the whole thing feels much better. Uh, I mean, I like on one anyway, but this just feels like a new program and it's got a, you know, it's just the new layout, the way you can work with layers is much, much better. It feels a little bit more cohesive and less modular than it used to be. And I think it's great for that. The other thing is that the price on them is quite reasonable as well. I think the upgrade price is $79 at the moment. And um, I should really go and look uh, because I haven't actually looked at the price on it. Um, tools and features, maybe down the end. I've got a tools and features list here. So let me go and look at the bottom. At the moment it is $99 to buy and $79 for the upgrade. So, you know, the normal price on that is $120 and $100 for the upgrade. So it's pretty good going. A lot of the um, software that's out there, there's a big range on the prices on them. So you can go from um, a deal on Luminar at the moment uh, for $49 if you use a code. Um, and then you've got exposure for $149 as well. And they all offer similar tool sets, but they all have unique things about them as well. So on one is definitely a huge one worth considering. I am really, really impressed with what it's doing and I'm definitely going to dive in more and do a little bit more tutorials on that as well, folks. So hopefully you enjoy that video and I will see you in the next one.